Hello everyone, we are back to work on the F-250 Super Duty here today, and she's going to get an upgrade that I have been looking at doing for quite a while, because it's uh, it's not necessary, you know, for the drivability of the vehicle, and there was a whole bunch of other stuff I needed to do first, but now that we've got the front end and the wheel end sorted out, and all of the other little issues that this thing had, it is time to focus on the driver's seat because it is very much worn out. It's been like this for a while, ever since I've been driving it, it's been like this, you know. Um, there's the mileage if you're curious. But that towel has been in there ever since I started driving this because that really hurts a guy's back. And if you've got to drive this thing for more than, you know, 15, 20 minutes, it really starts to hurt a feller's back, even with that towel in there. So we're going to go ahead and replace this thing, give it the royal treatment, give it the upgrade that it so rightfully deserves at going to be 24 years old this year, this pickup. So I will talk about where I got the cushion and cover here after bit, because I do not want to give them praise or hate on them unnecessarily if for whatever reason this doesn't work out or anything like that. So obviously we're going to have to take the seat out to do this job, which is not hard. There's just four little Torx. Well, they're not little, but they're Torx headed bolts and you'll need like a T55 or 60 to get them out. You know, they look like that. Now, uh, my understanding is that this should be pretty easy. 45 minutes to an hour is what everywhere on the internet said to do this job. So I'll just bring you guys along for it and kind of give you the highlights because I've never replaced a, a seat before and we're going to see how it goes. Somebody likes to leave stuff in their pickup. I guess we'll uh, have to clean this out first, won't we? All right, well, I forgot. This is a little special. So it is T55 on the front, but then on the back ones, for some reason, it's just a regular hex. So I don't know what the actual socket size is. It's probably like, I don't know, 15, 16 millimeter. I'm using a three quarter because I've had this seat out of here before. Believe it or not, I did empty everything out of this at one time and clean it. And that I don't think even was a year ago. And it's already dirty again because, you know, it's a work truck. But now that we have the door shutting right and the air conditioning working, I should be able to leave the door shut and keep more dust out of here. So I, I ought to clean this again. Y'all let me know down below if you'd like to see me clean this pickup. But there's also this connector underneath with a little tab like so. You just push down and pull out. Uh, it's something to do with the restraints. I don't know if it even works. It's never had to work, you know. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. And then once we get it out, probably going to have to take this trim and stuff off. So I'll come back once we have the seat out and we're ready to do that. Okay, so I have the trim off here. Your lumbar adjustment, it pulls off, takes a fair amount of force, so just pull evenly on it. There's a little screw in the center of your lean-back adjustment handle that you'll have to pull off. There are two screws underneath here that you will want to pull out. That is what holds this part in here. I do not recommend prying on these little rivets that are on the front. And then on the rear, there is a little plastic rivet that goes back in. I broke mine. There wasn't. There wasn't much there keeping it on. So what I'm looking at next is what I'm trying to determine here is how much of this I actually have to disassemble. So once I get that figured out, I will bring you back again. But I'm not going to try and extrapolate because I imagine I will end up correcting myself later. Okay, so you have to remove the seat base. So there are four bolts Okay, on each side and well they look like this you will have to move each end back and forth now this one up here which would be if you're sitting in the seat this would be your right hand rear okay this one you can start with a quarter inch ratchet and a short 10 millimeter but once you get so far you're gonna hit uh, you're gonna hit this part right here so then you'll have to take a wrench and get in there and back it off the rest of the way. But it doesn't come out too bad. And then you will also have to pull the bolt that goes in here, which holds your seatbelt latch system. There's that connector and all. That is a T50, but a T, uh, let me think, what was it? 
what was the other one that I had? A T45 would work in a pinch, but a T50 is the right size and that fits it really good. So what it looks like now, I'll back up a little bit. What it looks like now is that I will be able to just come in here and pull these off, right? Because this spring system down here is not attached to the underside of the seat cushion, you know? So I think I will just be able to pull these off and I should be able to work the cushion and cover out of here. So I will do that and I'll let you guys know how that works. Well, I got it off. It was a little bit of a process. You do have to, of course, unhook all of these here, which I, I don't know if there's a good way to do it or not. If you're a professional seat installer and you know a better way, then you leave it down in the comments. But the best way that I figured was to use a pair of channel locks and kind of get over them, right? And then I'm, I wasn't trying to grab hard. I was trying to hook that plastic on one of the teeth on the channel locks so that I could just kind of like pop it over the metal without bending it. But I did bend the metal some. That's okay. I can bend it back. The problem I'm having now, though, is that I noticed that this is all floppy. I got to looking, and you can see right there that this has gave way and, uh, and torn. So what I need to do is see about fixing that. You know, get her back into place, bend it back into place, and then I can't, it's too thin for me to weld. I'm not going to try and weld it. But if I can get like a piece of plate or something in there and I don't know, maybe bolt it in something. I'm going to do some fabricating to try and fix that because otherwise this is just going to continue to be floppy down here. And uh, I don't want that. So I'm going to get a solution figured out for that. I'll bend all this metal back and stuff. And then the other thing I need to figure out, which I have not yet, is this hard backing right here. I don't care so much about this, but this hardened fibrous cloth is kind of important because, oh wait, no, I'll just reuse it. I'll just peel this up and reuse it. But this is important because otherwise those uh, strings there are just going to cut into this foam. And I mean, granted, it took 24 years and however many pounds of weight sitting on it to finally do that back here, but most of your weight is going to be here in the uh, center and this new foam does not come with the thing that I need there. So we'll get all that figured out and fabricated. We'll see about snapping these back over and we'll go on from there. But it's gonna be, oh boy, this is gonna be special. I really think, if look, if I could weld, I'd probably weld it, but I think what I'll do is I'll drill the hole, a hole there so that it stops tearing once I get it bent back. And yeah, I'll, I'll just show you what I do, what I did when I do it. Yeah. All right, so I drilled a little hole here where that split kind of ends, right? And in theory, that will stop it from getting worse. That other one right there will go towards this big hole and stop eventually. And I've got a bolt in there. Just a quarter by one. It's probably quarter by one and a quarter or one and a half. And double net. Hopefully that won't interfere with anything. A lot of people are probably going to watch this and say, well, why don't you just weld it or have someone weld it? And the reason why is because this is like sheet metal and it's stamped. And as you can see, they can't really do a lot with that. Even at the factory, there's not a lot of penetration there. Okay, and so while I would rather have it welded, and in theory a weld would be stronger, in this case the bolt is going to serve just fine, because all this thing has to do is run another 24 years and 200,000 miles, and, and we're good. That's all it has to do, is another 20 years and 200,000 miles. And I'm pretty sure that of all the things that could give out in that time period, this is going to be one of the last ones. Um, I plan on restoring this truck eventually, that would be... Well, I say plan on. I hope that at some point I can restore this truck because I don't want it to be my daily forever just because it's a gas burner. But until I get around to restoring it, this will hold just fine. And when I do, I'll find a new one of these to put in. So we've got that fixed. Now, the second problem I'm having here, and I'm going to set this up and see if you can see it. 
Do you notice how this is ever so slightly bent? Okay, there's like a there's like a bow through here. You can you kind of see it. It's not it's not much. It doesn't look like it on camera, but if you look at it, you know, not through a camera, it is it's pretty bad. And I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or not, but I can't really do much with it. It doesn't look like anything got deformed through here abnormally, but I would imagine this because, well, here's my thinking. Here's the reason I don't think it's deformed or it's kind of supposed to be bent like that is because it's bent evenly. It's bowed all the way across evenly. And if it was not supposed to be like that, it would be all like lopsided from where this came apart. So that's, that's kind of my theory here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on, right? Like, oh, yep, there, just like that. We'll put the springs back in, and then we'll go out. I'll rip that old hard backing on the old cushion, and we'll get the new cushion put on, because I think this is about as good as it's going to get. wanted to show you this real quick. This end and this end are pretty tight. These, this one here is not bad. This one here is kind of eh, and this one here is kind of eh. It could be that the springs are shot, and what I might, actually, you know what, what I should try here real quick. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not. Let's see here. If I swap this spring, like if I put this in the middle and we keep the springs balanced, if that makes any sense, we might be able to accomplish something here. Of course, do it. Almost. Come on. Yep. All right. Oh. Oh well. See, it's a lot. It's a lot more easier when you've got two hands and the camera's not on. <sighs> Hang on. Okay, so I switched the springs around because originally these two were loose and that one is still the same because I didn't change it. And this one is a little bit better and that one is a little bit better. So now, kind of what I'm thinking is. If I can get these, I don't think the springs are shot necessarily, but some of them are more worn compared to others. So let's, let's swap this one here and this one here and see if maybe that makes a difference. What do you guys think? Oh, come on now. And is that going to make a difference? Nope. It is the deformity in the metal up here. Uh, this is still not as good as I want it to be, but it is better than it was. So between the new cushion and this being fixed, I think it's going to make a heck of a difference in how that thing sits. All right, compare and contrast here, old versus new. And it looks like the new one is a little bit different color. Um. It might just be, well, no, it is a different color. I don't know how much this one's faded in. This one is a lot different. It probably may have looked more like this when it was new. I'm not sure. I think it looks exactly the same and all. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab it and take it over here and see if it's actually going to be good enough that I'm not going to care. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a heck of a color difference. That's going to be a heck of a color difference. I don't know if I should send it back and get a well, no, cuz there's only one color of blue. So huh. Might just be the lighting, I don't know. We're going to go ahead and put it in. And if the color bothers me that much, I'll either buy a seat cover to put over it or I will get some of that color bond stuff and I will spray this and it'll stay colored how I want that way. It is several days later now and I went ahead and put this seat back together and put it back in just so I could use it. And fixing that seat base did help this considerably right here. Unfortunately, the, the cushion, the factory cushion, is still deteriorated to the point where it's not it's not quite right. And, of course, the cover is also torn. So, I did procrastinate for a little bit, but I took a picture of this and the new seat bottom 
and I sent an email to the place I ordered this from, and I said, hey, this is the wrong color, picture attached, and that's the only thing wrong with it. The shape of it and everything is just fine, so I'd either like an exchange or a refund. And so they, they got back to me within the same day, actually, and they called, and the guy said, well, here's the thing. And he said, more than one person has called complaining about the, the differences in color. He said, believe it or not, the new cushion and everything, that is what your seat looked like when it was new. And he said, what happens is just over time, they kind of break in and fade in. And he said, they get dirty. He said, I bet if you took this original cover and like took it to the dry cleaners, it would become a different shade. He said, these develop like almost a brownish hue after a, you know, a long time of being sat in and whatnot. So he told me to put the new one in and just sit in it and use it. And he said eventually it'll start to match the the same color as everything else. Um, because what he also told me was that they bought everything that Detroit had before they closed. Or ended production or whatever. So I, I would imagine... and Well, and he did say this. there's only one color of blue that goes with this and it's that color that they have because he said we don't use anything but OEM colors so there you go so what I will do now is pull this back out of here get it back apart and we'll go ahead and continue the swap and then we'll do a you know a set test and uh, wrap everything up okay everything back apart a couple notes I will have to cut some holes so that everything lines up like it's supposed to. And then um, I think this is already provisioned out in the new. Yeah, you can kind of see it there on the new cover. But the bigger thing I wanted to draw attention to here is, well, a couple things. The first thing being I found an easier, slightly less violent way to get these off of the seat frame. Which involves, well... Which involves basically, I don't think I can hold the camera. You get behind this on one edge with a screwdriver like so, and you push it up and away from the metal, okay? And then you get on the back side and pry it off that way. So what it will look like when you're doing it, I'll flip this base over here so you can see what I'm talking about. When you get in here, what you'll do is you'll get behind that plastic and pull it up like so, and then you'll kind of work your way back in behind and you'll just kind of do this as you're going down and that's a little less violent than trying to use the channel locks plus it doesn't bend this so I figured that out uh, second thing I did is I pulled these off and they're just nuts that are bolted to the bottom of the seat frame here but well they're bolted to the seat track which is bolted to the seat frame and they're they're nuts but what I realized is that after undoing three of them with a wrench I realized that they put holes in here where you could uh, stick a socket through and pull them out. So that was a little bit of a waste of time. And other than that, everything is as it was earlier in the video. Because I am going to reuse all that old footage. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get this all replaced and fixed up. We should not have to do too much. To this new bottom, if I can get it out here real quick for you. Like I said, we'll just have to, uh, let's see, this will be the driver's side, so we will have to cut a couple of holes here, right, unless, yeah, they didn't. So we've got a provision here for the seat, the lumbar cable to go through. They've already cut that for us. But the rest of it, we will have to kind of mark out and cut. Well, I say we. I will have to. There's a slot here that will have to be cut for the um, for the seat belt cable and everything to go through. You know, that safety restraint deal that runs underneath here. I'll have to do that. And then, of course, this hole for where it bolts, where the back hinges. And then a couple more holes here. So... I'll get everything laid out and figure out how I'm going to cut it, and then I'll bring you back when I get all that figured out. Okay, holes cut. Got this one here. And I crudely got these cut here 
that should be it's not perfect but it should be enough so how i did this i even got that one there cut and this little one back here cut so how i did it was i went ahead and peeled off the old seat cover okay so the way these are fastened to the cushion it's a very intense form of velcro and they've got a strip running around the edge and then one up here in the front in the middle and i assume this one's the same way but you just carefully get in here and peel it off what you might want to do is hold the strips because they will peel out from the cushion if you just yank on it but i went ahead and took the old seat cover off and then i got it fit as snugly over this as i could and even though um even though the sides you know right here were torn and all and kind of stretched i managed to get it fit over enough that I could cut a few holes and I, I just cut as big a hole as I thought I could get away with. If I need to make them bigger, I can, but there's a trim piece that will cover this. So if you screw it up, it's not too bad. Use a brand new sharp razor blade to do it because that's going to make cutting the easiest and don't slip and cut your finger because that hurts. But because it was a new razor blade and it was such a clean cut that should go ahead and heal up in a couple days. So you may have to vacuum your seat when you're done, but I'm going to go ahead and get this put back on the pan or not the seat pan, the, the, the bottom, the seat frame, and we'll see how everything works. I will open up these holes as needed. These should all be more or less correct. I don't know because I would imagine at the factory when they were putting these together, they had a pattern and they had a hole punch and they just went ahead and punched holes where everything was supposed to go. But because we are amateurs, or I am at least, we got to do it the hard way and crudely uh, etch the holes in. But look at this. 1201, 24th of September, 2000. How about that? That is not far away from my birthday, which is why I've said more than once, this pickup's as old as I am, damn near it. Just a little bit. So, yes, I will get this thrown back on, and I'll drop in and let you guys know if I run into any hiccups. Oh, would you look at that? It's all coming back together. Um, I did not... I calculated that this would stretch when I put it on, you know. Um, but it's a lot tighter than I figured. So I cut my holes too high, basically. Because I also tried to compensate for the fact that my template was also pulled really hard this way. But I should have followed it more closely instead of moving up a little bit, because yeah, this stretched quite a bit, but that's okay because the trim panel will cover all of this. We have the other side firmly secured down in there, if you can see it. And I think if we play our cards just right, we can get this little fabric flap up, come on, and kind of tucked down in there just for that little bit of extra aesthetic so yeah that is a heck of a color difference i really hope that the guy was right and i think we're right here you can kind of see it darkening up just a little bit so i hope that that guy was right that this will darken up because it is a significantly lighter color than i am used to so we'll see and I'll definitely post a progress report later, but got the hard part done. I stopped in mainly to mention that when you are putting these hooks on, basically all you have to do is kind of, uh, I'll show you on the old cover because that's a little bit easier. When you get them, you want to have them kind of like this and pry them so that you kind of catch this on the metal a little bit and then fold it over and it should kind of snap into place. And it might take a few tries. This stuff is really, really tight because it's brand new, but it'll go ahead and break in. Um, do not forget to pull the shielding off the underside of the old seat cushion. I don't know that it matters that much, but I want to protect this new foam um, just for as long as possible. But yeah, it's looking good. So I've got the lumbar support back in. I've got this side bolted on, so next step, I will begin putting the seat track on and the seat belt in, and I'll just start 
putting everything back together and get her thrown in the vehicle. And that is the next time you will see me unless something interesting happens. Ta-da! All in. As you can see, the colors are a lot different. So I really hope that guy I talked to is not pulling my leg because that that would be a really, this is, this is really expensive. This was not cheap. Um, we'll get into that though. So the outfit I purchased this from here is Richmond Auto Upholstery, okay? And I'll put their website down below if you want to go check it out. They offer a lot of stuff, you know, in the seat world and all that. I went with Richmond for several reasons. And I look, I looked dozens of places for, I, originally I was looking for just a seat cushion. And then I looked for just a seat cover. And it just, the options were just not there. You can find brown and gray all day long. You can find King Ranch and Lariat all day long. But when you get into this XLT, this blue, this dark denim blue, you know, Richmond was the only place I found that even acknowledged that this was an interior color option. Uh, and it's a very pretty color. I mean, I really like it. You can step back here and, and ignore the, the mess and the junk in the background. But I mean, I really like this color, this interior. It's very nice. And I can't imagine there were only a handful of people that ordered this or got it in this because, it, I mean, it really is slick. It's not cheesy. The The red they had you know, in trucks previous to the Super Duty. I, to me, that's a, that was a little cheesy, right? But this, this is nice. Um, but yeah, with, with Richmond, I'm going to hold off on, a, on an outright endorsement. You know, I'm not going to cuss them or anything. So I will be honest in my review of my experience with them and this product so far. And that is that their communication... Uh, you know, they were pretty good about communicating with you. Uh, they, they had this, obviously, you know, they acknowledged that it was a real thing and I had to call them to order this particular unit or this particular piece. And you have to take pictures of the old seat and send it to them. And they also want your VIN number, but I just took a picture of the entire VIN tag down there and sent it to them so that they had all that information. And then they called me back about a week after I sent that in, and they were like, hey, yeah, we've got this available. Uh, here's the price. And I said, all right, uh, do I have to order it now? Or I'm like, no, no, your inquiry is saved under this phone number, so just call us back when you're ready, and uh, you can order then. So I had to order over the phone too, which I don't like to do, but that's not really Richmond's fault necessarily, that I don't like to order stuff over the phone. Um so, I, I mean, they were communicative. Uh, minor complaint, just a little thing I will mention to you, though. If you do call them to order, make sure that you... Make sure that you spell your name phonetically, if you know what I mean, if that makes any sense. Because they misspelled my name slightly, which, I, I mean, it's understandable. It's, you know, sometimes it's hard to pronunciate over the phone, right, and understand it, so... It's not a big deal. I'm just saying, if you want your name printed right, make sure you phonetically spell it for them when they ask you for the name on the uh, shipping address and all that. But the back to the product here, the cushion is right. The cover is, the style of the cover is right. The color is the only issue that I have an issue with, really. Um, there are options for fixing this to get it to the right color. I can I can paint this. Colorbond makes a paint and they say you can use it on anything, you know, you can use it on your trim panels, you can use it on your uh, seats, your vinyl, your leather, whatever, and it permanently bonds and changes the color of it. So I mean that's an option. More realistic option, uh, if this doesn't want to change, and I'll probably do this regardless of if it does change and, and look similar or not. It's going to get a whole seat protector put over it, you know, because this is still a work truck. So the, I needed the seat because this thing killed my back. If I had to drive this for more than 10, 15 minutes, it just killed my back. And it's not going to now because it's, you know, it's nice and comfortable now like it should be. So I have no complaints there. But... I needed it. Is it the right color? No. Will it break in and change and look similar? I don't know. 
if it doesn't and it really bothers me, I can paint it. I can put a cover over it and go from there. But, you know, when you're, when you're looking for seats for your Super Duty, really the only thing, if you can find a place that will sell your seat cover, you're lucky. If you can find it in the color and style, you're doubly so lucky. Most of what you get is brown and gray or black. Richmond was the only place that even acknowledged that blue was, was an option, which is why I went with them. And they were about the same price as everyone else. So it didn't really matter in that regard. Which, speaking of price, I will say this cover and cushion here, for me, with tax, the shipping was free. It's just over $500. And that is a lot of money. Now, is it worth it? That's something only you can decide what I will tell you, first impressions having this in, um, just for the back saving qualities alone, yeah, probably it was worth 500 bucks. Uh, and then when you figure they're the only people that even acknowledge blue was a color, they are the only people that differentiated that the super cab had different lower seats. You know, they're, they were concerned about that. They were like, hey, uh, you know, is it a super cab? Is it... Do you have the 40-20-40 split bench? Do you have the camel hump? Or are the seat belts integrated into the seats? You know, all this stuff. They, they asked all those questions, and they took all that into consideration. And so, is it worth that kind of money? I think that's a little bit high, quite honestly. But, you know, this is a... This is a 23 and a half year old vehicle, and people have moved on, and what few Super Duties, original Super Duties are left. Probably a lot of them are not in the blue. And so you take all that into consideration, the rarity of it, the age of it, the specialty of it. Yeah, $500 is probably about right. I mean, it's a little high in my opinion, just because I don't want to have to cough up that kind of money for a seat. But I'm sitting in it and it's really, it's really nice. And that kind of takes the, kind of takes the sting out of that bill. But that's kind of what you're looking at for this. Now, your quote might be a little different, so don't just don't go to them with my information, my experience, like it's a gospel. But this is what you have to work with. So I will sit in this, and I will drive this for a while, and we will see what it does. We'll see how I like it. We'll see if it changes colors or not. And, you know, if this will hold up for another 23 years and that many miles... I'll be happy, and I, I think it will, because that other one was just struggling. So between this being a new cushion and the seat base being fixed, this should be this should be good for quite a while. So now, this time last year, I had a worn-out seat, a driver's door, and a driver's rear door here that would not shut, air conditioning that didn't work, brakes that were eh, at best, and a 4x4 system that was really, really sketchy. So I drive down the road and it would just vibrate the hell out of everything because that, you know, locking hub and all that was going out. So here we are a year later and I got the front end taken care of. New brakes, new 4x4 stuff. Um, the AC is fixed. The door is shut. And now I can plop my butt down on a nice, comfortable seat. And I can drive for more than 10 minutes without, you know, being crippled when I get out of the vehicle. So that's awesome. And I'm glad to have this done. So that's pretty much all I got. Because I've rambled on for a little bit here now. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll put stuff down in the description. So check that out. And I'll hop back in here in a few months or something. And let you guys know how the seat's working out. How it's holding up and all that. And we'll go from there. So thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And... Tune in again next time when we probably see if that's going to start because we have more cleanup to do and this, this needs to get out of the way. So tune in for that if you're interested. If not, more Super Duty stuff on the way eventually. So yeah, there you go. Take care.